What's going on people? In this video, I'm going to talk about 11 beginner photography mistakes and how you can actually avoid them to have better photos in the end. So if you're ready, let's get into it. All right, so the first mistake that a lot of beginners make is taking shots only at eye level. When it comes to photography, there's so many different options of what you can do. You need to do something more than just taking shots from eye level. Now, there's nothing wrong with taking shots from eye level, but getting different angles and changing your perspective is gonna really up your photography game. So, as you can see, we got our little Bob Ross here. Bob Ross is gonna be our model, and we're gonna see the difference between taking a photo from eye level and just changing the perspective a little bit, changing angles, just so you can see how the different photos look. Moving on to mistake number two, and that's always keeping your subject in the middle of your frame. Now again, this is something that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but eventually it's gonna make your photography kind of stagnant. It's not gonna add anything different to your photography. And photography is an art form, so you might as well switch things up every once in a while. So again, Bob Ross as our model, and let's, let's take some shots. As you can tell, just not having the subject always stay in the middle of your frame really gives your photos a different dynamic. It adds a little bit more mystery and having a little bit of mystery is something that is always gonna make your photos more intriguing to look at. All right, moving on to mistake number three and that's gonna be rushing your shot. A ton of beginners rush the shot. They have a new camera, they just wanna use it. So they just go out, snap, 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 snap. They don't take their time and photos just don't turn out exactly the way that they could. The, all the potential that they've had in those photos is gone. So we have Bob Ross once again. Last time we're gonna use him as a model, but I'm just gonna show you what things to look like if you're rushing your shot. All you really need to do is take your time. The shot you want is gonna come if you take your time. It may not come right away, but if you take your time, you're gonna get the exact shot that you want. Now we're gonna talk about beginner mistake number four, and that is taking shots that are out of focus. Now this kind of ties hand in hand with the previous mistake because if you're rushing your shot, a lot of the time you're gonna get a shot that is out of focus. So if we take a look again at those rush shots, you'll see that some of them are actually out of focus. And what's really the point of having a shot that's out of focus? You can't see anything, you can't clearly see what you want to show off. And think about it, that's really the whole point of photography. You wanna show off the world that you see around you. And if you can do that, you want the people looking at your photos to see them as clearly as possible. You don't want people to miss out on any details because of a simple blur that you couldn't get rid of because you couldn't take your time taking a shot. So all you need to do is make sure that everything that you want to be in focus is in focus before you press your shutter button. Again, I understand you probably have a nice camera and you wanna get all the shots possible, but you really need to take your time because your camera it can only do so much at a time. It needs time to process what it's looking at, so if you give it time to process what it's looking at, it's gonna do exactly what you tell it to do. And if you don't give it time to process, eh, things aren't gonna work out very well. Mistake number five, this is something that is so easy to fix. I can't believe that not every photographer uses this, but it is a simple mistake that people do always make, and that is not always having a tripod. You should always have some sort of tripod with you, no matter what. You're not always gonna need a tripod when you're taking your photos, but having one with you is gonna always come in handy. It's never gonna hurt you to have a tripod with you. It's gonna be extremely frustrating if you're out on a photo shoot and you're trying to get shots but you don't have a tripod and there's gonna be certain shots that you absolutely need to have a tripod for. And if you don't have a tripod, then you're just SOL because there's nothing you can do. You can try to hold your camera steady and keep those steady hands, but trust me, your hands aren't gonna be nearly as steady as a tripod would be. So in the end, you're gonna have pictures that come out a little shaky or don't turn out exactly how you want simply because you didn't have a tripod to stabilize your shots when you needed it. 
And when it comes to tripods, there's a ton of different kinds. You have these small gorilla pods, you have much cheaper tripods that actually stand, you have high-end tripods that you can use. There's a wide range of tripods that anybody could use. And if you're really looking for some, I'll put some in the description below. But this is something I need you to get through your head. Have a tripod with you at all times. Mistake number six, and that is having a confusing composition. Now when it comes to composition, a lot of beginners can struggle to set it up just the way they want it to be. Composition is something that is not easy to perfect at all. Sometimes even the most advanced photographers struggle to get the perfect composition. However, the more advanced photographers understand how composition works and how it relates to the photos that they're trying to get. So because of that and because of their knowledge, they understand what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. So for example, if I took a freeze frame right now, and you see that, you see that the composition kind of makes sense. There's nothing really confusing about it. However, if you take a freeze frame of this, the composition just doesn't make nearly as much sense as it did in the previous freeze frame. You want your composition to always make sense with the subject that you're taking a photo of. If your composition doesn't make sense for the subject, the photo is gonna be confusing. If your composition is confusing, it's gonna distract the viewer from what you're trying to display on the photo. And if you want to learn a little bit more about some composition tips, here's a video up here that you can look at and hopefully that will help you understand composition a little more so that you don't take any photos with a confusing composition. Keeping this thing rolling, moving on to mistake number seven, and that is going to be not understanding the light around you. Now when it comes to lighting, lighting is always going to be the most important aspect of any photo that you take. And trust me, fully understanding all of the light around you isn't going to be an easy thing to do. If you need to understand the importance of lighting in your photos, check out this video over here because that really explains why you need to have good lighting for all of your photos. But if you want a quick and brief explanation, good lighting means you're going to have a much better looking photo. It doesn't mean that the subject is going to look good or the composition is going to look good, but it means that you're going to be able to see everything within the photo. If you have poor lighting, I can almost guarantee that you're not going to have the best photo. Good lighting is always going to lead to you having a better photo than you would if you didn't have good lighting. And you need to understand the differences between natural light and artificial light. For example, if you look at back at the scenes and the photos that I took with Bob Ross, all of those were with natural light. However, if we look at the scene right here, all of this is artificial light. I have an understanding of how these light sources work, so it's much easier for me to get the type of look that I'm going for because of the light that I'm working with. If I have a very poor understanding of light, I might have a scene that looks something like this. And as you can tell, this is immediately just isn't as pleasing to the eyes. So if I turn my light back on, there, better lighting leads to a better visual. Better visual leads to a better photo in the end. And that's all you can really ask for out of your photos. You just want to try and take the best photos possible every single time. Beginner photography mistake number eight, that is not knowing your camera settings. Now I know if you have a nice fancy camera, then using auto settings is gonna be something that you're attracted to at first because this is a lot easier to use. However, we're trying to strive beyond that. We're trying to be better photographers. We're trying to be better than the auto settings. So because of that, we're gonna be messing around with the different modes that our camera has. And with those modes comes different settings. And when you mess around with the different camera settings, you're gonna have a much different output from your camera. Your photos are gonna be able to look a lot different than they would with the auto settings. So because of this, it's extremely important to actually understand and know what your camera settings are. If you didn't know what your camera settings were, you can take photos like this or photos like this and not understand why they're looking like that. However, if you did take those photos and you knew your camera settings, you know what you need to adjust so that you can have a much better photo in the end. Knowing your camera settings allows you to make small adjustments so that you get the exact photo that you're looking for. Not knowing your camera settings is always gonna be a rookie mistake. And when you wanna consider yourself a more advanced photographer, you're never gonna make this mistake again. After you're done with making all your beginner mistakes, you're gonna understand that you need to know your camera settings because that's only gonna help you in the end with every photo that you take. All right, mistake number nine, and that is not always shooting in RAW. When it comes to pictures, you can either take them in JPEG or you can take them in RAW. My suggestion is to always take RAW photos. Why is this, you may ask? RAW just captures more details in the photos that you're taking. And it's gonna allow you much more freedom when it comes to the editing process. 
There are a ton of differences between JPEG and RAW and they're all pointed out in this video over here. So check that out if you wanna know the differences so that you can make the best decision for you. But my suggestion will always be to shoot in RAW. Now visually, if you just look at a simple RAW photo and a simple JPEG photo, the JPEG is probably gonna look a little bit better simply because it's kind of already processed within your camera. However, the RAW photo, you can put that into some editing software and manipulate that exactly how you want it to be so that you have the photo turn out and look exactly how you want it to be. So stay away from JPEG, shoot in RAW, you're gonna have better photos in the end. And I think this is a good segue into mistake number 10, and that is over editing your photos. Now you have these beautiful raw photos that you just took. Nothing's gonna kill them unless you over edit those photos. You can do way too much with editing your photos. Not every photo requires a crazy amount of editing. Sometimes the best edits are the most simple edits. You don't need to take a simple raw photo like this and change it into something crazy like this. That's just doing too much and it's gonna take away from the original beauty of that photo. What you should do, you should take that same photo and make a simple edit like this and you're gonna have a very nice looking photo. You're improving on the raw image and you're gonna have something that looks better than the original without over editing it. Trust me, until you find your specific style of editing, keeping things simple is gonna be best for you. You don't wanna always over edit your photos because things are just gonna look a little crazy in the end. And when you have a crazy edit, I truly believe that not as many people are gonna take you seriously. And I don't know about you, but I always wanna be taken seriously with my photography and my videos, so I'm assuming you want the same out of your photos. You want people to take you serious, so don't just go crazy with every edit that you're doing. Now we are at our final mistake, and this is my favorite mistake to point out, and that is thinking that having a very expensive camera is gonna allow you to automatically be a good photographer. I'm gonna tell you right now, the camera does not equal the skill of the photographer. Does a more expensive camera allow you more freedom when it comes to your photos? Yes, but it does not make you a good photographer. I take all my pictures with my Canon EOS R, and trust me, at first, I did not get the most pleasant photos. And that was very frustrating because I believed that having this camera would automatically mean I would have great photos every single time. That just wasn't true. That was something I had to get through my head. So it's something you need to drill through your head. You need to understand photography to become a better photographer. You can't just have any camera, snap, 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 and then be like, oh, I'm a great photographer now. No, it doesn't work like that. If it were that easy, everybody would be a great photographer. And I guarantee you know a few people that you're like, oh, you definitely cannot take photos. So that should be your first indication that not everything is gonna allow you to become a good photographer. Now there's some people out there that can take better pictures with their phone than others can with an expensive camera like this Canon EOS R. Now is that the camera's fault? No, not by any means. That just means that the people taking the pictures with their phone have a better understanding of photography than the people with a legitimate camera. Photography is something that isn't easy, so don't just assume that just because you have a good camera, you're gonna become a good photographer. It's not gonna be that simple. There we have it people, 11 beginner photography mistakes that are gonna hold you back a little bit when it comes to your photography. However, if you can avoid these mistakes, you're guaranteed to have much better photos. My question for you guys is when you're taking your photos, what is one mistake that you feel you always make and you struggle to always get over? One mistake that I always make is rushing my shot. I tend to try and be a quick run and gun type of photographer. I need to learn how to slow down a little bit more just so I can always get the best photo that I can. And since I still have you here, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Daregram and be sure to follow me on TikTok at Dare to Capture. Both of those great platforms, you're gonna learn a lot from me about photography and videography. So if you wanna learn a little bit more, be sure to follow me on those. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That's gonna help me and it's gonna keep pushing me forward to make better content for you guys. And I guess since I'm asking for everything else, you might as well hit that like button as well. It's only gonna take you a couple seconds, so be sure to hit that. And there we go. That's all I got for you guys. I will uh, catch you in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.